It's no surprise that tons of companies are coming out with new webcam and working from home and digital communication options for the current day and age. But today we're going to be taking a look at the latest from Razer, which is an update on their Kio webcam. The brand new Razer Kio Pro aims to offer advanced imaging and fidelity in both streaming and productivity situations. With 1080p 60fps, HDR, and a ton of other features, how does it perform for the $200 price point? Well, let's check it out. Thanks for watching 9to5toys. Be sure to like, subscribe, and enable notifications with the bell icon so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Hey everyone, I'm Jordan with 9to5toys, and first off, let's take a look at getting the Kio Pro out of the box. Upon opening the box, we see a little bit of literature, and underneath that, we see the camera itself. It is large compared to most entry-level webcams, but because of its size and weight, it feels really solid and well-built. The design is simple and sleek, and I love the textured ring around the front of the camera. This textured ring around the front really makes me wish that there were physical controls for adjusting like focal length or the FOV like uh, you can do digitally with the Kio Pro, uh, but I also just think it gives it a really nice look as well. Also included in the box is a USB-C to USB-A cable and a lens cap to place on the camera when not in use, which can also protect it when traveling or commuting. And sitting under the camera is a really solid mounting system that offers a lot of functionality. Like most webcams, it can easily clip to the top of the monitor to sit on top, and with adjustments for vertical tilt and turning left or right, it's easy to dial in the camera to your situation. Or you can easily remove the stand altogether with a thumb screw and place the camera on a third-party tripod or stand. Additionally, the stand can hold up the camera by itself on a desk, and it also features a quarter-inch mount for a tripod or stand. You can see on the back here that there is a USB-C port. It does come with that cable, uh, but I really like having the removable cable because you can also use a longer USB-C cable if that's something that you require for your setup. So my PC is actually over there, but I have a longer uh, Oculus Link cable that I use for my Quest 2, but I was able to run that cable from my PC and use it over here in the middle of my room uh, to test a bunch of different lighting situations here in the middle of my room. So it is pretty nice to have a removable cable so you can use a third-party cable if that's something you need. Of course, the main thing here is the image quality coming out of the Kio Pro, so let's talk through some of the specs, and then I'll go over some of my real-world experience. Topping the spec sheet is that 1080p resolution at 60fps, of course. Obviously, 1080p is about as high as what we see from streaming cameras, uh, which I think is probably plenty resolution for streaming, uh, but also that 60 FPS is great for, you know, if you are a more expressive streamer as uh, Razer describes it. You know, if you have a lot of movement and want that motion to come through smoothly, then 60 FPS is definitely something that you're going to want to look for. Also on that spec list is that adjustable FOV, so it can get pretty wide if you want to have multiple subjects in the same, you know, camera shot, but then you can also use digital zoom in an appropriate software like OBS or Razer Synapse to adjust that FOV and kind of punch it in a little bit uh, and make it so it's not picking up the entire room. And one other key feature here uh, we'll talk about a little bit more when we talk about image results is HDR. Uh, that does cut the FPS down to 30 frames per second, but uh, Razer claims that, you know, this can obviously help in some challenging lighting situations, uh, but it provides some mixed results in my experience. So overall, with all those things together, in most situations, I found the image coming out of the Kio Pro to be really sharp, clear, and smooth as well. Having 60 FPS really makes a difference in streaming setups. And there's noticeably less grain or distortion or noise uh, in the image coming out of the Kio Pro compared to like my MacBook Pro or an entry-level camera like the uh, Clear One Unite 10 that we checked out not too long ago. So overall, in most situations, I was really impressed with the image coming out of the Kio Pro. But one of Razer's main pushes with this camera is that it's a great option when uh, you don't have really favorable lighting. So in a productivity sense, if you have really harsh side light or backlight, uh, the Kio Pro is going to be a great option to battle that. And so here we're going to show some different examples from different lighting situations. I tried to, you know, really put it through the test in this room because I do have some windows so I can easily get backlight or use the windows to light my face or get really harsh side light. And so we'll take a look here at what those different scenarios looks like on the Kio Pro. While I thought that it looked great in most situations, it did really struggle when it came to the most severe situation, in my opinion, which is having uh, backlight you know, directly behind your subject. So for me, that's having the camera set up here, facing my two windows on this other side and without any light coming from the front of the camera. Obviously that's gonna be really difficult for any camera to you know, figure out what to do with that. But when using the FaceTime camera on my MacBook Pro in the same situation, that camera seemed to blow out the background of the scene in favor of providing some more proper exposure on my face. But with the Kio Pro, I couldn't get the camera to expose my face for more clarity. It was always very dark in comparison, and it was really hard to see any sort of detail on my face. 
It did help to crank the brightness up all the way in OBS, but the image was still dark and lacked clarity. But in almost every other situation, you know, even with harsh side light, I found that the Kyo Pro worked really well. And especially in low light and in, you know, really good light conditions, uh, the image quality coming out of here is really top notch. With the camera turned about 90 degrees, the image looked great. Turning on HDR seems to boost the contrast some as well, so I found myself leaving that off most of the time in favor of a more even exposure across my face. In low light, I found the Kyo Pro to work really well. You know, even when the only light on my face was from my monitor, I felt that Kyo was able to easily pick that up and provide some really nice detail on my face. Once again, compared to the FaceTime camera on my MacBook Pro, there is noticeably less grain on the Kyo Pro. Uh, it is a much more clear image. And of course, this can be connected through Razer Synapse. So let's head over to my PC and we can uh, check out what all you can do to make adjustments to the Kyo Pro within Synapse. All right, so here we are looking at the Kyo Pro with inside Razer Synapse and we can see all the different controls that we have here. Um, and actually in this current situation, it's not super ideal lighting. So there is some light behind me, as you can see in my super dirty uh, studio slash yes, bedroom. Uh, and I have zero light coming you know, from this side, from the face. So all the light that you see right now is just from uh, my monitor. So it looks pretty good with uh, that being the only light on here. Now I am gonna turn on, I have set up one of my key lights over here. I'm gonna turn that on so you can see what it looks like with uh, some more lighting actually on your face. All right, so here I just uh, flicked on the light. As you can see, uh, it's pretty bright on this side and a little bit better exposed here. And you know, we can see if we cover it up and try to get some new exposure. I mean, that's just kind of what it's working with. But one cool feature that Razer has built in here is that HDR. Uh, but if you click this SDR button, that will enable HDR. And so that actually provides a little bit better lighting. It seems like it's doing a little bit better on the highlights on my face, uh, and it does provide some shadows, a little more contour over here, which might be good or bad. There are some other lighting scenarios where I think SDR looks better, uh, but that's just a good example of what you can do here. And this does take it down to 30 frames per second, so you're not gonna get the same smooth motion as what you would with the uh, SDR. But looking back in uh, other controls you can do in here, uh, for the image, we're gonna go over to default, uh, see if that really changes anything. It doesn't really, um, but you can adjust the brightness, obviously, take that down and up. I'm gonna put it back in the middle, which is about 128. You can do the same with contrast, dial it down or up. And then uh, you can obviously do the same with saturation. Um, so you can completely take the color out or you know really, really blow it out if you want. And you can adjust uh, white balance as well, but you know you can just leave it on auto if you don't wanna mess with it. That makes it super easy, uh, but then we do also have the advanced settings, which uh, as you can see here, make sure that's popping up, yep. So this is kind of what also pops up when you're uh, making adjustments within OBS. I am recording this through OBS, obviously capturing my screen. So here you can do kind of the same adjustments with uh, brightness, contrast, saturation. You can adjust sharpness. Uh, which really makes the gray hairs in my beard stand out. Um, you can also do white balance and some other adjustments in here as well. But over on the camera control side, this is where you can adjust the zoom. So that uh, changeable FOV that Razer talks about, uh, this is where that starts to come in handy. So you can get really wide. So this is definitely good enough to have a couple, couple different people in the frame, um, but then you can zoom in as well if you'd rather be uh, a little bit more cropped in on your subject. So really cool feature there. I'm trying to remember where I had it at. Something like that, probably. Um, then you can also manually adjust focus if you want. Uh, I found that it does a pretty good job with focus actually. Um, so we'll just get my uh, Leatherman. You can see like even up to a couple inches away uh, it does get it, you know, in pretty sharp focus. That's about probably an inch or two, inch and a half, two inches away from the camera. Um, so I think it does a really good job with focus. And obviously that's great to be able to, you know, if you do want to show something off, you can just put it up to the camera and, you know, it, it can find that focus really easily. And when you do have it uh, zoomed in, you can adjust pan and tilt. So you can uh, kind of move the camera left and right. Obviously that's just a digital adjustment. It's not physically moving the camera. Um, but it's great to have those um, additional advanced controls. And obviously a couple other things here, um, you can do wide, um, you can do medium, which will zoom it in. And if we go to advanced controls, I wonder what that actually puts it at. So that puts it at 136. And then if we cancel and we go to linear, um, we'll see what that does. That puts it at 136 as well. 
uh, but it seems to try to you know eliminate some of the uh, fisheye effect or warping you can kind of get on the sides in there. So we'll go back to wide here. Um, so yeah, just some really great controls built into the Keo Pro. Um, obviously, you know, there's a lot you can do with here. Um, with that, you know, stand, it makes it really easy to frame things up differently if you want. Um, you know, put your camera off to the side, put it on a tripod or something if you want. This is probably more of an angle that I would actually go with if I were streaming, so you don't see the uh, guest bed in the background there. But yeah, a lot of cool things, a lot of good adjustments you can make with the camera within Razer Synapse. All right, so here I have it open uh, within OBS. Uh, it's kind of a weird overlay trying to get all this <laughs> to work out right in here. Uh, but just wanted to kind of show you, you can make all the same adjustments in here uh, within OBS. Actually, I'm trying to, oh, there we go. If I pop that over there, uh, you can see those adjustments. So obviously you can deactivate it and that will let you see the um, preview within Synapse. You can't see the preview in Synapse and OBS at the same time. Um, so you can do that. Here's you can do your custom resolution, frame rate, um, anything like that. Uh, you can also configure the video where this was the uh, same window that we saw when we were in Synapse. Um, so here's where you can make a lot of your same adjustments within OBS. So pretty cool, you can do that. Um, once again, I have that uh, I have that key light. I moved that away and turned it off. Uh, so this is just the light coming from my monitor. Uh, and I believe we have it in the SDR mode, so it's pretty even across my face, um, even though there's all that clutter and light and everything in the background. <laughs> Again, sorry about that. Um, but yeah, so here you can kind of see uh, what it looks like in OBS. And really, I think it looks uh, really good, nice and sharp. Um, for a comparison, let's see if I have it here. I have one of the other cameras I reviewed recently, the Clear One Unite 10. Um, and so this is the feed that's coming <clears throat> directly out of that right now. Uh, direct comparison to the Keo Pro. Um, so obviously the Unite 10 is a budget camera. I think it's only like, uh, I don't remember. It's under $100, maybe like 75 bucks or something like that. Um, but the image quality coming out of the Keo Pro is just, you know, it's an insane difference between the two. Um, these are the exact same lighting conditions and everything. Um, and yeah, the Keo Pro is doing 1080, 60 FPS, um, while the clear one, you know, can't really even keep up. Overall, I've been really impressed with the Keo Pro. Some of the allure did fade with the performance of my worst case scenario lighting, but any camera is going to struggle in that situation. And I would always suggest adding some other light or changing the position of the camera. But in low light, harsh side light, and perfect light, I found that the TO Pro produced a really clear, crisp image, and 60 FPS is always going to be a great feature as well. And that'll wrap it up for our review of the TO Pro from Razer. Let us know what you think about it down in the comments below. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. This is Jordan with 9to5Toys.